Three, two, one. Oh, bad clap. <laughs> bad clap. I felt like you were so unprepared for that. You didn't know what's going on. Well, because you counted it. I was putting my water down, and I would have done my usual three, two, one, and clap. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to this channel where we feature the wonderful show, That Range Life, a show sometimes about golf. Chris, if I'm not mistaken, this is episode 81, right? Sure is. Episode 81. Look at us. As always, that's Chris McEwen over there. This is his YouTube channel. Do us a favor. Subscribe to it. Hit the button so you get notified every time we put up one of these wonderful videos Yeah, about God knows what. Sometimes golf, sometimes not golf, but God, we know you love them. All right. Hey, Do shout a- out real quick to, uh, did you see the comment by Caleb today? No, I haven't yet today. It, it was a very nice uh, comment uh, on one of, I think it was the, uh, it was some, it was like, you know, you know how people watch our shows way, it was like episode 73 or something. Okay. Uh, but he said he was loving the show and he said, keep doing the reviews. We're going to keep them. We're going to keep them coming. That's what, That's what I said. So shout out to Caleb, man. Problem. Thanks for that. Appreciate shout it. out, Caleb. I haven't seen that. Uh, I've been a little busy today. I woke up at two in the morning to start <laughs> right. working on a brisket. I cooked all day. It was delightful. Best I've ever made. I got a nice few job. new tricks up my sleeve. Uh, I've had people reaching out looking for them, and you know, hey, let's all take it easy. But yeah, I've not paid attention much to golf. I know this. Uh, Kisner won the wind, the wind ham, the wine ham championship in a playoff fashion. I know, uh, Ryan O'Toole, big break alum. That was super fun to watch. Yeah. I didn't get to see it. That was really fun to watch. Yeah. I I watched it in the morning. It's great. For whatever reason, I've always been a big fan of her. She won. That was cool. Uh, corn fairy tour stuff seemed pretty nuts. Um, our good, our good pal, Ryan Q info. Yeah. At a case of the golf one on right. the Twitters, right? Was uh, there with all the coverage, some interesting stuff, and um, a lot of good golf action today. But I missed it. Anyway, the brisket was so good, and uh, let's let's talk about our show today. We're gonna talk yeah, to. Uh, let's get into it. I would say, if not the best, one of the best friends of the program. Tour Edge's sure. own John Claffey That's is, right. here, is going to be here to talk about the Tour Edge Exotics Pro 721 lineup. For those that may not know, if you haven't checked out DriverRangeHeroes.com yet this week, we posted the review of the new Pro 721 driver. So we'll talk about that, I'm sure, within Gear Talk. And mm-hmm. then, um, look, we got we got you, we got me, we got Big Claff. God knows where the show will go from there. We'll see what happens. All <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. All right. Chris, are you ready for Gear Talk? Can't wait. All right. This is Gear Talk. <laughs> All right. Gear Talk's going to be a little different today. Obviously, you can see now we have our good pal. Please welcome to the show, John Claffey, Tour Edge Golf. There he is. There he is. John I feel like it's been a while since you've been on the show. I think you've been on our show 112 times. Out of I mean, he's, yeah, he fills in all the time for me when I can't yeah. make it. Right. And, I have, uh, yeah. Yeah. I filled, and, in, I filled in once for the whole, you know, as a co host, but usually right. I'm a guest. I think it's probably my sixth or seventh time I get, I would guess. <laughs> but I, enough time in there. Yeah. Enough times to get a hat, which I'm sporting. Got the DRH right. hat going on. I was gonna say for you know, check out secondcitygolf.com, pick up that hat. You know John's an OG. He has the original Drive Range Heroes logo on his hat from 1976 <laughs> when the internet and Drive Range Heroes were born. So uh it was a real deal. But yeah, it's a it's the only one of that hat in existence as far as I know. Um all right, so you're here today to talk about the new Pro 721 Metal Woods lineup consisting of the new driver, the new fairway wood, and the hybrid, all of which I have seen in person. I've only hit the driver, which we had the review up earlier this week, and we can get into it. But um, it's 
let's just kick off with we're following the same concept of the EXS Pro last season, doing straight from the tour van. We're calling it limited edition. Uh, only so many pieces of each available to the public, right? Correct. So, yeah, well, I mean, let's start with a disclaimer right off the bat. This is not a product for everybody. This is tour design stuff with as, you know, as close as you're going to get to the face center of gravity. Um, so really low spinning kind of beast mode tour, you know, 110 miles an hour swing with your driver plus um, kind of benefit type of clubs. So, you know, when it comes to the driver, it's a little smaller. You got a 440 CC going than your typical 460. Um, you know, with the hybrid, we're talking like one of the smallest designs that you'll see. It's uh, and I've got them back here. So I'll, uh, while, while we're going through them, I'll show you guys the heads and stuff. But um, deeper faces, more compact from heel to toe, more compact from front to back. Just that's what the pros are looking for. They, they want as compact and as deep a face as possible. Anti-left clubs, really low spinning. So we already have, as you guys know, with the C721, we have one of the lowest spinning heads already mm-hmm. in the marketplace. Um you know, the R&D team, David Glad, Matt Neely, all the guys in the R&D team nailed the, what we call the C721, the C standing for competition. And it's been one of our most successful drivers out on tour uh, already. Um, I think we've had um, 12 different guys so far this year choose to play that driver for no compensation. You know, your, big, your bigger names like John Daly and a couple of our staff guys, but not all of them. Um, but then a whole slew of other guys that have just picked up the driver, put it into play and are continuing to play it. More importantly, so uh, Bill Bush and Chris McEwen. Very true. They have the C721s in their bags. They do. And Very it's, true. But, so you guys know it's low spinning. So it's already a tour quality design. But now we've with the new driver, we've designed it to be about 400 to 500 RPMs less spin on average. So just again, we're just taking the lowest spinning head, making it a little smaller, making a deeper face, more traditional pear shape. And, uh, and we're taking even more spin out of it for these guys who really swing fast that, you know, you, you hear a guy going, well, I just can't hit the ball. You know, I always hit it way too high, but everything's ballooning on me. Like, you know, there's a certain subset of guys that have that issue and this is the driver for them. Mm -hmm. So, I guess good opportunity. We can dive into my review experience with it. And uh, the the majority of that experience was at Tour Edge. John's like, oh, hey, by the way, while you're here, look, uh, do you want to hit this? And I said, yep, I sure do. That's cool. You have this here. Um, you know, like a, I don't even think it was a glimmer in the public's eye at that point. But uh <laughs> And right. it's everything he described. And it reminded me a little bit. And I said to him right away, like, God, this is a lot like the EXS Pro experience last year. It's like, oh, yeah, the driver's cool. But this thing was you, you better eat your Wheaties today <laughs> if you're going to hit it. You know, uh, and it's I think for me and this is after I've, you know, I'd fallen in love with the C721 and it's so easy to hit. So forgiving the high MOI, all of that. Where I felt kind of like a chump, like, oh, God, I can't handle this thing. And I mean, you guys know, you know me. I, I can swing the driver around a little bit. And I was like, man, I got to pump this thing. This <laughs> this is it. And it is. It's a pro grade driver. I, I can yeah. I can see here with John holding it, that center of gravity is forward. And it's like right behind the face. It's right yeah. up front, which yeah. historically speaking is a tough ask for me. Let me just hit, I can hit my microphone. Just <laughs> Bill's fine. getting excited. Get excited. <laughs> um, but to these points, like it is low launching. Yeah. The deep, it's definitely deeper than the C721. Um, and I, I noticed the lower spinning. Like I wasn't at first, it took me some adjusting. Then obviously there's a whole like shaft fitting and what have you, but I, it was tough for me to get it in the air to get the carry. But that said, I could keep it online and be more accurate because it wasn't spinning off the planet or anything. It was, yeah. but things a beast, just a beast. Yeah. You know, and um, it's, it's not that the face isn't forgiving. It is going to be that issue of, can you get the apex height? to to be ideal um and a lot of guys are saying well you know it's it is a little lower you know i'm not hitting it 90 feet 
or 90 yards up in the air. I'm hitting it, you know, hitting it 80, but yeah. um, they're going to take that. It's that, um, it's that low penetrating bullet that everybody will take. Cause it just rolls for days. It's super straight. It's t- really hard to get offline. But um, as you can see, as you mentioned, you know, it's comparison to the EXS pro, which was a very well-received driver out on yeah. tour. One of the fastest growing models last year. Uh, we're just about, we just launched this at the, the Wyndham this week. Um, and we're launching it next week at the Boeing on the champions tour. Um, as you can see, it doesn't have that sliding rail that the EXS pro had. It's got these extreme heel and toe weights. So we call that the flight tuning system. We've had that before, obviously just interchangeable weights. Um, but they are, as you can see to the, the very furthest you can go to the toe, the very furthest you can go to the heel. So very effective in shaping your shots that way. Um, obviously it's got the adjustable hosel still, um, the diamond face 2.0, but the big, I think feature that everybody's talking about is this matte finish on the crown. Yeah. That yeah. rich back um, matte finish has just been very so pleasant to look at. It frames yeah. the ball very, very well. Um, and it's still getting all the benefits of Ridgeback, which is more stability um, on heel and toe miss hits, which is uh, an exceptional sound and feel. We think it's got some of the best sound and feel in the marketplace. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a beast. It's, uh, but it's, it's definitely going to, you know, about 400 RPMs lower than that C721. So, wow. you know, the, the guy that's swinging 115, 120, um, is really going to benefit from that because they're just, you know, they're hitting everything so high. Yeah. I'm having a hard time focusing as I'm looking at you two lovely gentlemen on the screen. Cause I feel like we have, all right, you know, John's here with golf clubs and the DRH hat talking golf, same for myself. And then we got camp counselor, Chris over here <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the hoodie and the Jamie, bear Jamie camp 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 Chris, yeah. yeah, that's true. Like, all right, guys, let's go get the kayaks out and uh, get your fishing poles. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I want to be clear. I don't hate it. I'd love to go do that. That'd be awesome. I think I'd make a pretty good camp counselor. I, oh, you know you what? Would. You would. 110%. <laughs> You'd be a great camp. Like, I'd go to that camp. I'm not a camp. You know me. I'm not a go to camp guy. I'm not going. I don't want to go to camp. Right. I'd go to the camp with you as a counselor. We'd have a great time. Oh, yeah. Anyway, well, the hat probably came from uh, the the Justin Fields era, right? That's what. Oh, I mean, that's why I brought it back out. I, this is this is from probably when they had camp back in the day when they had camp, like at uh, Bourbon A, <laughs> and I got it out. I got it down there. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to think of the head coach at the time. I don't even. God, Wanstead. Don't even no, it was after Wanstead. But, Lovey. Uh, but, uh, no, Lovey was uh, after Lovey. Who was the coach after Lovey? You lost. Was man. it Dick Duran? You know, yeah, I, for, I think it might have been Dick Duran. That, that disaster. I did but, forget. Uh, this is and then Mark Tressman. Yeah, that whole thing. So yeah, that's it from the from back then. But I did bring it back out because Bears Bears fans' hopes are renewed after Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Now, not to deviate from the topic we're here to talk about, but did you guys see today that someone asked Justin Fields about the speed and he was the speed of the game and he's like, it's actually a lot slower than I expect. It was kind of slow for me. <laughs> say that? Like, not. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, this was over before it even started. <laughs> All right. Welcome That's back. Hilarious. Welcome back to the fifth week in a row of the second rated Chicago sports podcast. I know. Really? God, look, we're the worst. <laughs> back to, avoid it. Back to pro right. seven 21. So I will say, right. um, it's a good point about the extreme placement of the toe and heel weights. I feel like uh, when you put weight towards the face and the sole of a club for that low center of gravity, it's very noticeable. But, you know, usually when you're going that far forward, you're not looking for stability as much. And I think like one of the highlights with the C721 is – that high MOI and it, you know, the face just stays like so square and solidly straight that the stability is like a hallmark of the club where in the pro, maybe that's less important, but because the, the two weights, even though they're up front in the face are so extreme towards the toe and heel, a lot of that, like grooving it square and keeping it straight and stable still exists in it which is kind of weird feeling and rare for that type of golf club. And it's, I mean, it's nice. It's great. Um, 
really catches you off guard though. And I, I thought it was noticeable. Maybe, you know, I, I feel like when I say stuff like that, I sound like the guy who's like, Oh, I'm Tiger Woods. I can feel an air bubble in my grip tape through the grip, you know, like, right. I'm not that guy, but I did notice that the driver and it, it does feel more stable. My two cents. What do I Yeah, know? No, I would agree. And, uh, and very effective and, you know, just switching up your, your flight pattern. Um, it also, so, yeah, sounds nice. like, it also sounds like uh, when you, you catch them in the sweet spot, you know, whether it's because of the diamond face or the ridge back, whatever, but it's so solid and it not in an overbearing everybody look at me on the driving range sense, but it sounds just like a perfect like gunshot off the face of the club when you nail one. I mean, it is just rock solid. It's so good. Yeah, it's a little louder than the C721. And I think that personally, I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, the C721 was kind of right in the middle of, you know, muted and carbony. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, th- yep. th- uh, the thwack, if you will. <laughs> and uh, this is a little bit more like, oh my goodness, we, they better be careful down there. Well, it's like, uh, it's, it's almost, to me, it's like, you're right. Thwack is the right word for it. And it, like, I think the C721 has a perfect thwack slash, like, smack or slap sound to it like that right in the middle just perfect sweets i love how it sounds but the pro 721 is not far from that but it has a lot it has more like a definitively more uh pop to it like there's definitely just more just more to it if yeah it's not more that's a that's a measure of sound it's it's an amplified c721 Sound is that what just you're a little bit. Just... I mean, it's not it's not a college World Series baseball game. It's <laughs> you know what I mean. It's uh, and some people, hey, everybody's different with sound and feel. Some people like the really carbon, carbony, not. But I just don't feel like you get enough feedback um, mm-hmm. when it's when it's that muted. Um, so I like it kind of in the middle. And I thought C seven two one. You know, at the time, I you know I thought it was the best sounding driver out there, and I still probably do. But I really like the way that this one kind of lets you know when you hit the sweet spot. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. Um, it is – you're like, okay, that was nutted. Just shot. Just shot off. And I think like like he, like John said, oh, they better be careful down there on the driving range, right? Like it definitely <laughs> has that. But it isn't that like, you know, uh, classic Nike square Sasquatch or SQ2, whatever that club was called. Oh, man, uh, yeah. you know, metal cannon. Where you're like, who right. is at the driving <laughs> right. range? Like, it's not like that. It's just right. It's very definitive and just oh, it's it's great, so good. All right, fairway woods in your hand. There. I see that now. This is the one you posted a picture. You, John, uh, might have been early last week, and. I mean, I'm dying for this. So Chris and I yeah. are also big fans of the man. Look at that uh, EXS 220 Fairway Woods, and I, you know, yep. I told you uh, the C721 is really nice. Chris has had a lot of success with it, but it, you know, yep. I, I couldn't quite turn over into it. I hit the 220 better, liked it. Um, everything about this club, though, the shape, everything looks perfect. I'm, I'm just you're teasing me with posting these <laughs> pictures of it. I understand like, look, we got to wait. They're limited. They're hard to get, but I'm so excited for this fairway wood. And I, I'm sure you have a lot of good things to say about it. Yeah. I mean, I think if I had to pick one, that's going to really, you know, shock the world out of these three, the driver, the fairway and the hybrid, just slightly leaning towards the fairway um, from the early feedback we've received from the tour already have, you know, some PGA Tour players on the big tour testing it out to really good results, um, not only off the tee, but off the deck and and just kind of loving everything about it. Um, so it kind of is hearkening back to what made us get this kind of cult-like following with Exotics when we launched in 2005 with CB and this uh, the CB1 and the CB2, the first two uh, fairy woods we ever made for Exotics. Um, but also back to the CBX, um, what we refer to as the spin killers. Um, you can see here the face is just kind of classic deep fairway wood. It's not intimidatingly deep. I was gonna say it's, it's not, it's not, I feel like we're calling it deep here, but it's yeah. really not that outrageously deep compared to a lot of the giant fairway woods out there. I mean, I think it's I think it's perfect um, for and you know everybody who's seeing the the profile, 
you know, I wish I could show you guys what it looks like at a dress because one thing about all three of these clubs is, um, you know, who, who is actually producing a club that sits open at a dress um, these days. So the, the driver actually sits two degrees open. The fairway sits two degrees open. The hybrid sits perfectly square. Um, yeah. Again, that's, that's the feedback. That's what these tour players want to see. That's where the straight from the tour van moniker comes from. We designed these for the tour. Um, so basically, you know, there's a thousand heads of the nine, five driver, a thousand heads going to be made available to the consumer on the 10, five. There's going to be a thousand total. We're not doing any five woods on the, on the fairway woods. So this is 13 degrees, uh, 15 and a 16, five. So a four wood in there. Um, and there's a thousand total of those. And then there's a thousand total of the hybrids and those are in four different lofts. So the rest, now we order a little bit more than that. Those are just what goes out to the consumer. So it's a little ebb and flow there because, you know, we reserve about half of them for the tour. And, uh, you know, so we originally make these for the tour players. We go out, we test them with them. So we've had a select few of our staff players who have hit the prototypes and given feedback and said, wow, you guys really did listen and did a lot of what we asked for. And uh, so then now we're launching at the same to the tours. We launched this past week on the PGA Tour. We're launching next week on the Champions. So basically, it's available to the consumer at the exact same time that the tour players get it in mass. So it's uh, just something really cool. You know, we um, we we like doing these small batch releases. We think it, you know, it's our highest price stuff. We think that it can show that we can go toe to toe with anybody yeah. when it comes to you know creating these low spin. Um, clubs for, you know, your really advanced player. Um, and, you know, usually we're concentrating on getting people as much loft as possible, as, as easy to hit club as possible. That's really our bread and butter, what we do with hot launch and what we do with the C721 stuff. Um, so this is kind of our one opportunity to go out there and show you everything we can do for, you know, just, you, you know, your fastest swingers. So, you know, your long drive guys would love these heads um, anybody who's got, you know, like I said, uh, over 110 miles an hour is going to, going to really love hitting them. They're a lot of, they're a lot of fun and it's a lot of fun to have something that's kind of limited, says limited edition on the head cover. Um, you know, there's not an exact science to how many, you know, it's not numbered or anything, but, uh, just know if you get one of these in the next uh, few months, you're going to be one of the few guys on the block that are gaming these. The thing I so I didn't realize there's only a, a thousand of the fairway woods total and no five woods. You do realize I mean, this is great for you guys, I'm sure, but but those will be gone in a second. Right. They're not right. like right. given your reputation, you know, Tour Edge's reputation for fairway woods and what have yeah. you. Those are and we ran last out a second. We ran out of the EXS Pro. We sold them way faster than we ever believed we would. Um, so that was kind of an eye opener. Um, but we can always order more, which is what we had to do with the EXS Pro. We uh, we went through them in about, uh, I would say, three and a half months. Uh, we had some irons that, you know, we had some irons in that release as well in a wedge. But the metals were gone within about that time period. And we brought in another batch and announced to everybody that we were doing so. So it's just small batch production, kind of boutique-y. Uh, stuff that we're doing and uh you know if, if they go like hotcakes we will bring in more but so it's not like hey you better act now these are just these are going away in, in two months but you know they they could sell out for a little bit could be hard to get it's kind of hard to get a yeah. golf club these days yeah right i kind of i kind of appreciate um i don't know maybe this is a controversial uh statement but i feel like tour edge has that that a bit of a chip on you know their shoulder and uh and they want to show that they can make anything like we don't just make X, Y, Z, but we can also make this stuff too. And here it is. That's definitely a fair statement, Chris. I mean, we've, we've got to go and prove ourselves every day against people who, you know, have more product awareness. And, right. uh, you know, even though we've been around for 35 years and um, a lot of people are just finding out about us now. And, uh, and then there's the whole, you know, when, you know, when your tagline is pound for pound, nothing comes close. There's some stigma with the guy who says, well, you know, if I pay twice as much, I'll be getting twice as much performance. And he's like, no, you gotta, mm -hmm. you really got to figure out what pound for pound nothing else comes close means. It means you're <laughs> going to be paying half the price for something that's even better or, or just as good as something that costs twice as much or three right. times as much. So we take pride in the fact that we're able to do that. And it's all the highest quality materials and components. 
Uh, the shafts on these are a brand new uh, Tensai Raw series. So we have the three different colors in the driver and the fairway wood for the orange, the blue, and the white. Um, great new shaft. They call it the raw because it's exposed uh, portion of the shaft on the butt section. Uh, it's a great new shaft. It's really, really testing well. Um, so in the hybrid, you get a couple different options of the Tensai Raw as well. You know, you can get any shaft you want that we that we carry for, for no extra upcharge, but we've found that the, the Tensai in these um, are really performing well with these heads. So and I think if you go and look at it, what a Tensai, cost, a Tensai Raw shaft costs on its own, You'll be seeing once again, you know, <laughs> even though the driver on this is a little bit up from what we've done in the past, it's four four nine. Um, you know, the, the fairway would stay the same at two nine nine, and the hybrids two forty nine. Um, so it's you know, it's it's nothing to scoff at. It's it's not yeah. what people would say is cheap. But if you look at the market, you look at what these compare to out there, and and they're still costing almost twice as much. So. Right. Uh, we know the performance is there. So we do have that chip. We always want to go out and prove ourselves. That's how we win our battles is, oh, yeah, well, let's see what happens. Let's go head to head. Let's put it on track, man. That's what we're doing on the on the Champions Tour. And we've gotten 127, 127 different players out there who have chosen to play our club in the last four seasons. And they're doing that because of performance. And they're making their checks, um, you know, during tournament <laughs> life. Right. So. You know, who's to argue with 127, 127 PGA Tour champions players? Yep. Well, and let's segue that into the last club in the lineup. Um, a notable name that has joined the staff in the last year-ish, I think, because COVID <laughs> pandemic's a blur. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bernhard Longer, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of his feedback, and actually I feel like the timing of – that video you posted where they were interviewing um, American Golf in the United Kingdom, I believe, was interviewing him about his tour edge clubs and whatnot. And he's he's pretty uh, I don't I don't know if bold's the right word, but he was very forward about saying he specifically is going to work closely with tour edge to take these club uh, take tour edge designs to the next level and get him. I, I can't remember exact wording, but I was like, whoa, geez. But Bernard yeah. Bernard was along the lines of like, listen. I'm going to show these guys what they need to do to get to the next level. And this hybrid, maybe I don't have a good idea of the history and I don't have the catalog in my brain back a decade with tour edge, but like I haven't seen a hybrid like this out of tour edge anytime recently. And it is a great departure from recent designs. Yeah. It's and, and yeah, Bernie was, uh, Bernie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were, I don't know if you know hey, this. I know him now. Like it, we, he, we work together. Not a big deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's what we call him. That's what everybody calls him out on tour. But you know, Mr. Langer, yeah. um, he, did, he did say in that video that uh, he's working hand in hand right now with David Glott on a set of irons and they're still working on those. But um, this hybrid was, um, he did have some feedback on it. And uh, he just, you know, he really likes putting an iron swing on a, uh, with a hybrid. Mm -hmm. And so he's also very particular and very, you know, select on what he's, you know, his shapes and everything else. That's why, you know, his bag when we started working with him is, was uh, mostly an average of 15 years old, I believe, the clubs. So once, once he gets something in there, he's not changing because he falls in love with the shape. He falls in love with just about every little aspect of the club. And so we knew this was a long-term project with him. We've already got hybrid and play the well, the higher lofted hybrid that he started playing off the bat in the Masters. Um, you know when he made the cut as the oldest player to ever uh, make the cut at Augusta. Um, so he started with hybrids, then he came to us and started working with irons. And so we're pretty much got a full set in there right now of irons, and we've got a wedge in play, and um, and everything else is is you know a work in progress. And we knew it wasn't going to be an overnight um, deal. We one thing we do uh, on tours, we never force a club into anybody's bag. So, you know, like we, we'll, we'll sign a guy, we'll get the logo, um, you know, on the hat or on the shirt and the bag. And we'll kind of say, okay, we'll start with a club, a two club thing and, and whatever clubs you, they, they're already in the bag and they're in love with. And then we'll say, and then everything else is, we're just going to work on it. We'll see what falls into place. So it's, you know, it's a very uh, realistic, way of going about things it's not like you know like 
a big corporate deal where it's got to be 14 clubs and you if you don't play our driver and there's going to be ramifications it's not like that yeah we, uh, again we like to go out and prove ourselves around every corner and so to have i think we've had 27 different guys play our driver out on the champions tour in um in the last two seasons uh 27 different guys choosing to play our driver that's you know tim petrovic and ken duke uh and duffy waldorf are on staff and they've played driver but the other guys haven't, you know, haven't made it there yet. We're always working with them. We're always trying. But that means there's 20, you know, whatever it is, four, 23 other guys that have chosen to play our driver for absolutely no compensation, absolutely no deal. It's performance-based. And that's what we're all about. That's why we're not shy about saying, oh, yeah, you know, um, we're still working with Bernhard on some clubs. But one of the ways of doing that is to take a shape and that we know he's going to like. Nice deep face on an iron like hybrid, <laughs> 85 cc's on this guy. So an 85 cc hybrid is not very prevalent in the marketplace right now. I think there's more cc's on this E721 <laughs> seven iron right here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting uh, study right there, but you could be pretty close. I think it's but you um, got a lot. You got a lot of work with with this uh, this squared off like toey face. That toe, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a really, really nice design. Um, you can see there's the matte finish on the crown, but you can really see how small, how compact it is at this yeah. view. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, again, the, the tour players told us we want to put an iron swing on a hybrid and not put a wood swing on a on a hybrid. So it's you know a little more sweeping action, and uh, they're getting the ball flight that they want that way. Uh, again, you've got your two weights here on this tiny little head, so this is going to be very effective and. If you need to shut down the left side of the golf course, which most pros want to do with a hybrid, you have the ability to do that with the FTS interchangeable weights. Um, no ridgeback on this one because why, why have ridgeback on a club head that small? It's not going to do anything. Um, yeah, so it yeah. would have just been cosmetic. So we just went with the cool matte finish on the top. But um, I'm excited to hit this one um, and, or get this in the bag. I've hit it, but it's it's fun to hit. And it's it's definitely, like Bill said, it's totally different from any, anything that we've been doing lately. Is yeah, that I, Diamond Face 2.0 in it too, I yep. assume? Yeah. Diamond Face throughout the line. <laughs> Got it. And, and you said that one sits square at, at address, right? Yeah, the other ones two. are open. It's kind of perfect to sit perfectly square uh, yeah, for yeah. a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to hit those clubs. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, it's it's going to be a very difficult uh, task to remain patient. <laughs> and it, I'll be, this is again where I'm grateful that I live a whopping 20 minutes down the road from the HQ. So, yeah. yeah well, I, there, and there's something about it, yeah, like you said, like they just look fun to hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and a totally different, and a to I mean, we talked about the driver, and you've hit the driver, but between the fairway and the hybrid, totally different experience, totally different, you know, setup and uh, different reasons for being fun to hit. Where, with, with uh, I think we're back to the glory days of fairway woods, uh, where we're kind of surpassing uh, some of the competition mm -hmm. out there with the with these three three woods, uh, and then with this hybrid, um, it's it's just one of those. What do you want to do with it? You know, how versatile can you make a club? Uh, because with this deep face, it's still going to be awesome off the tee, but it's going to be really easy to get up in the air. And so, you know, what what club are you looking for this to replace? Is it is it your four iron? Is it your five iron? And uh, and you're going to have a lot of success just hitting this uh, very consistently, I think, is going to be the key with this one. Beautiful. All right. I think it's a good point to wrap up gear talk, but I do have something we'll save want to talk about that you brought up in this but not necessarily gear talk um so chris do you have any other questions no john you just want to hang out after uh, gear talk yeah i'll hang out all right all right that was gear talk <laughs> all right john one thing you brought up we in the discussion of the pro 721 lineup was um Mr. Longer has joined the staff and started putting to quite a few tour edge clubs in his bag. And, uh, I don't know what people do and don't know about Bernard Longer and his bag composition choices. And I mean, not even just recently, but always notorious for a really weird bag makeup to the point where 
he will have, uh, you know, four through pitching wedge or whatever makeup of irons in his bag. And every single one of them could be a different manufacturer or if maybe it's the same manufacturer, but it's different club lines. And it's really like, what do I get the best performance in my four iron with what club and what's right for me? Five iron, same thing. So he's always had these really unique hodgepodge makeups of clubs. Um, and then I think, you know, he's won the masters. He's won a, uh, somewhere between two and 3 million times on the champions tour. <laughs> um, like this guy knows how to play. And then I think when you see the gear he has in his bag, it's fairly interesting. Um, and this goes from just like off the rack stuff to crazy custom stuff by some of the best, uh, hand forgers in the world, whatever. But then you mentioned, um, he's pretty quickly adapted to putting quite a bit of tour edge in his bag already. Obviously the hybrid at the masters last year was, uh, the big coming out party. But, um, can you talk a little bit about how, um, you know, the tour edge adoption he's had, what he likes in the clubs or, you know, why, why he's drinking the Kool-Aid, anything like that. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he's definitely, um, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do is to go and take somebody's bag. He's been playing the same clubs for 15 years and, and just, you know, say, Hey, we're taking over. Um, it's a lot of work and you got to be perfect. He, if something's just as good as what he's got in the bag for, for that long, it's not getting in. You've got to you've got to really show him that you know you're giving him the exact performance that he needs from the exact distances that he needs. And there's you know he can sit there on the range. He's like a machine. He can sit there and show you I can do every shot with this club, but here's the one thing I can't do with it. And then he'll show you you know when I block it, here's what happens. And I need it to be perfect. So it is you know you're not just talking about a couple data points. You're talking thousands and thousands of data points that you need to get correct with him. So, you know, we've been happy to, you know, obviously get the hybrids, the irons and, and, and a wedge in play um, close on a couple other wedges. We're working on more irons. We're close with uh, driver and fairway. So everything, you know, he's he's been testing them and putting them up against, you know, his his longtime gamers. And we know it's just a long process, but we're you know, he's a pro's pro. So he along the way, he lets you know, you know, all the updates on where things stand. And he's constantly constantly working out constantly working on clubs and um so it's a lot of fun it's it's you know it keeps us on our heels and keeps us uh looking to keep improving but um he's he's awesome to work with he's such a he's such a nice down-to-earth guy salt of the earth and uh but really just a brilliant kind of guy when it comes to you know the reason why he's got a hodgepodge type of uh bag is because the way that he looks at the game is just different he you know he he is so mathematical. He's so tuned in to every little millimeter on, you know, with shape and with uh, lie angles. And he's so in tune, you know, he's got this thing he does with his grips where his grips are actually turned to the side. And that was something that happened on accident about 20 years ago. A guy in the ra- a guy in the tour trailer uh, built him a club that had a little bit of a um, off center grip. And it, it was, you know, face so the logo faces a little bit to the right and when he first hit the club, he loved what it did. Um, with, you know, he likes a little offset in his irons, but he loved the, what it did to the shape of the, the ball flight. And he realized that it helped him uh, close, close down a little bit faster and, and be more uh, square with his club face. And so he ha- did that with every single one of his irons and every single one of his clubs. He started making that little adjustment with the, where the logo was on his grip. And he's been doing that for 20 years ever since then because he's so meticulous on on how, um, you know, just his apex heights, everything, uh, his spin rates. So it's um, it's definitely a, a project, but it's definitely a worthwhile project and, uh, and something that we've learned a lot from doing. You know, it's, everybody's a little different. I mean, Tim Petrovic is playing 13 exotics clubs, and he has played the Blades irons. He's played... The forged irons, the exotics um, pro forged. He's played the C seven two ones, and he's currently playing the C seven two ones. But here's a guy who just dances to a different beat uh, of his, <laughs> to a different beat of his own drum, yeah. and and wants to try everything. Um, but you know, we 
we don't have a deal with Tim to say you have to play everything. He just is choosing to. Um, Ken Duke is the same way. He's on staff with us, and he's playing a full bag, driver to wedges. Uh, John Daly is not even on staff with us, and he's playing 13 Exotics Clubs. So some people can adopt more quickly. Um, some people have a really hyper-focused uh, view of their um, how everything needs to be, and we're willing to work with either type of player. Um, we just, you know, we want to service these players to make them play the best golf that they could possibly play so where they can earn bigger paychecks and we can talk about it. I mean, th- so this past weekend was uh, the Shaw Charity Classic on the Champions Tour. We had eight guys finish in the top 25. Uh, four of those guys were playing drivers. Four guys were playing irons in the top 25. Uh, six guys were playing fairways and hybrids. And a couple guys were playing utility irons. So, we have gone from being a fairway wood and a hybrid company, as most people knew us, to being an everything company. And we're proving it on the biggest stage, you know, every week. So eight guys in the top 25, half of them had driver in play, half of them had irons in play, and the rest were playing what we were known for in the beginning, which was fairway hybrid right. utility. So, I mean, I, I feel like the way that we approach the tour is a little different. It's not as, you know, I would say – like some of the other brands that come in and just write the big checks. And um, it's more of an organic uh, relationship deal where we're there every week servicing these guys and doing everything we can running circles around, just making them up builds to, to help them play better. And they appreciate it. It comes full circle. And, uh, and at the end of the day, they're playing better golf with tour edge in the back. So it's, it's not like one of those, okay, here's the big check and now we own you. <laughs> right, you know, and, and it sounds like um, you know those bigger the guys that are writing the big checks um, are basically telling players uh, you're going to sacrifice X or whatever it is. I mean, they'll they'll fit the clubs to them, whatever. But to me, it sounds like Torridge is actually really trying to to partner, like legitimately partner with a player, and not just have them with a logo on their hat or bag or, you know, with clubs and, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, you guys are really trying to, to produce results for the player. That's what it is. I mean, we, we needed some guys to hang our hat on and make the commercials with and have a, a stable of guys, you know, the Tom Lehman, the Scott McCarron, the Bernhard Langer, the Tim Petrovic, the Duffy, uh, and, you know, six guys on staff. We just needed, you know, somebody that were able to use their name and, and kind of make a statement to the other players that, Hey, we're serious. We're, we're going to be a big player out here. And um, our, our approach has totally worked. It, you know, it wouldn't have worked if we went. Yeah. And, and you've seen other manufacturers try to do it, you know, with your, your Justin Roses and, you know, just, you know, my old, comp- my old golf ball company where you try to force a <laughs> round peg into a square hole. And it's the only way it's going to work. And there's a lot of pressure. And it's, um, it's better to just be out there and, you know, it's open game for everybody. You know, yeah. we, you know, you don't see a lot of the other even bigger companies than us getting a lot of clubs in play because they have their staff players and that's it. Yeah, They don't, they right. don't go out and work with the field. They don't go out and try to gain, you know, distance with a track man. And, and, you know, some of them do, but for the most part, no, uh, you're seeing, you're seeing the guys with the, you know, the logos of the company playing those guys clubs and that's it. Yeah. And there's no really cross over well we i've come from a, a tour standpoint where you you know we had no logos where the companies i first started coming up with and we were getting in clubs and play and finding a way to make that work and that's kind of the the fun of it for me i was going to ask you so you've been doing this a long time uh you know i don't know how long you've been with tourage now coming up on four years Jeez. okay yeah so i mean working with uh a guy like mr langer has got to be just a blast for well, for and you I, and the guys designing the stuff that's like something what that I was, is that meticulous I was, and that like it's got to be so much fun and i was wondering along those lines too um i think right uh mr glad has been doing this forever has worked with a ton of people you know it's like that's been the big thing he's hung his hat on all these years is like how can i work with these guys and really design something to deliver not just like crank out what the golf industry says I should be clank, cranking out or clanking yeah. out. Um, 
I have to imagine though, and just in the little bit of being the gear nerd that I am and what I know about Bernard, there aren't a lot of him, hymns in the golf <laughs> right. industry right. and in professional golf. And I don't know if they've had a history together at all, but like, I would have to imagine even for a guy like David Glad, all of a sudden, you know, after so many years getting to have this partnership with Bernard Longer has to reinvigorate a little bit, has to sort of like be refreshing for the soul in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, David's always been around um, guys, you know, get, David played golf in college with, you know, on the same golf team as, uh, you know, your, uh, your Rocco and Lee Jansen and Marco Dawson. So he, uh, but I think this is a level up from, what we were used to. I mean, we, listen, we, we were on the big tour and still are on the big tour, sure. but we had 10 wins from 2005 to 2015 on the big tour with, you know, the best players in the world, literally number one in the world, Luke Donald at the time when Brand Snedeker won the uh, FedEx cup, you know, we were in multiple Ryder cups. So um, it's not like we were, you know, surprised that we would get and play with so many guys. It's just the fact that we're, it's such uh, a personal thing to fly down to, you know, Boca, go to Bernhard's cl local club and work with him for an entire day and, and talk design. I mean, I think that has been a thrill um, for, you know, all our R&D guys. And um, yeah, it's it's just every year we're trying to raise this, get get this thing a little bit bigger and better. And every year it becomes a little bit more fun with the, how we activate it because the, the product has always been there for us. We, we know how to make golf clubs. We've been doing it a long time. Um, we know how to, you know, especially make, um, you know, medals is what we've always been known for. But now mm -hmm. David is using this opportunity to show, hey, I can make a big, you know, almost, you know, mid-tier game improvement iron and with a little bit of a thinner top line. And I can get that in play on the Champions Tour. I can and, and I can change some games out there. I mean, for for John Daly too, in the first event that he played us, yeah. he was playing the C seven two one driver and the C seven two one irons, and so it, you know everybody knows John likes small headed classic shaped irons, but he came to us and was like, I, I need something new. You know, I'm getting a little older. I just need a little bit more power. I feel, need to feel like myself. And in the first event, he played those clubs. He finished runner up for the first time in forever, yeah. and literally literally showed up at the next event. And he's like, guys. Wow. <laughs> he's like, I might as well be playing all tour edge because that was awesome. And he's been playing all tour edge since. So I think, you know, now that that stuff's happening kind of organically, um, we're starting to look around and everybody at the company, including David and, and John Craig and, and everybody, we're just looking at each other going, see, this is what happens. All of a sudden, cool stuff just starts happening because we've committed to this. We've really uh, stuck with it and uh, it's paying off. So you're saying you, a lot of great names you mentioned there, and I, I hope I did not get off the give off the impression that uh, um, I had any like disparaging thoughts to any of those people. But yeah, I don't 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 dismiss Matt Neely, my guy Matt. Right, right. Like, but <laughs> I just think like you know, Sneds, great. Obviously, Luke Donald, especially in that window, was so good and. A lot of great people he's worked with over the years who can really contribute and John Daly now. And, but as great and as interesting as all those guys are just that fascinating, beautiful mind that is Bernard Longer. Like to yeah. me, it's, it's kind of up there. Like when you hear about the Tiger Woods stories and working on clubs for him, like to me, just from the basics of like whatever, something I see on Twitter, watching some special on golf channel, like, that guy's brain just works differently. And I think he, yeah. you know, it's almost like if we're all seeing, you know, the world, the way we see it, he's seeing it like in different shapes and colors that I can't imagine, you know? Yeah. He's a badass. Um, he, you know, he just watching him hit balls in the, in the heat makes me tired. Uh, <laughs> but he just keeps going and going and going. He literally is the, the, you know, the uh, Duracell buddy or whatever that just does not stop. Um, and all it's the guys out there, it's energi energizer. Let's get the brain. Energizer, right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, I knew I had it wrong. I couldn't, it's been so Bill's, long. Since Bill's such a consumer. Of course he knows exactly. I, what the, uh, I've always is. wanted like my own energizer bunny that would just sort of hop around the room, you know? 
then I had two um, kids. But yeah, no, he is, that. and all the guys have so much respect for him. I mean, you can see it at every event. You know, it's just kind of like um, the guy has earned everything he has he has done out there. He's probably the best Champions Tour player of all time. You, you know, him, him or Hale, and uh, he's got it from working his tail off, man. It's it's crazy to watch. Well, I'm excited for what's going on at Tour Edge. As you well know, I don't need to tell you that. And <laughs> I, we talk about Tour Edge, I feel like, every other week on the show. Um, yeah, right. I don't know what else there is to say. It's very exciting times. Got a great new line of Metalwoods coming out. Um, I haven't seen anything from you yet, but I'm sure there's some great stuff in the works for next season. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here because the clubs that are out now are great. We just talked about the extreme game improvement e721 last week iron yeah fantastic mm-hmm. golf club obviously the c721 you talked about uh john daly playing and others yeah. well have- we got some we've got a couple guys uh big names champions tour players a little older guys that are testing the e721 to play on the champions tour right now so uh, mm-hmm. again it's a it's a club we would never have guessed would be in play on tour but uh, the more and more time goes on, the more that we're seeing guys being open to playing a little bit thicker top line, a little bit more offset and looking for that forgiveness. And I think as Bill called it last week, I did watch the show. Um, I think he called it the easiest iron he's ever hit and possibly the longest yeah. iron he's ever hit. So yeah, I, uh, yeah. I heard that. Well, and it's, so, and I, yeah, it, no, I'm not surprised to hear that, that there's guys, and I think I even said on the show last week that, if you told me a player of that caliber were to put these in for long irons or whatever, I could see that it's uh, as much as it can help some hack at your local Muni. Who's like a 7 billion handicap. It's an, it's like a perfectly uh, well-balanced club that can go, you know, across a whole wide range of players that even I think good players who just want help in that distance and length, but still want that, premium feel and a clean design that uh you know isn't a chunky shovel or boat right. like it yeah. and yeah. there you go you said you have guys testing it out in the yeah. champion store yeah getting pretty close with a couple guys big names um you know as complicated as we can make this game sometimes and make the equipment of this game um sometimes it's pretty simple is it easy to hit is it easy to get to launch it and uh and when i miss hit it is it staying straight and going where I want it to? Um, so that's it. You know that sometimes is just uh, the answer. Don't tell that to the various forum members of Golf WRX. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't tell them that. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a good spot to wrap it up. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. sure we'll be back. Well, actually, we'll 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 tease this a little bit, but there's plans. Uh, you know when things line up a little better, but we're going to yeah. get back together in person here with this group and uh, do some things. We'll just leave it at that. But uh, <laughs> John, thanks for joining us today. It's uh, just yeah, in man. general, good catching up with you. You're looking good. Like it. I like the spirit you have right now and things are seem to be going well. Good luck to you and your Indianapolis Colts this football season. Uh, Thank you. Chris, good luck to you and the team. Hope you get them trained up, uh, ready for the start of the season. I got to go load up canoes anyways with kids. So I got to <laughs> close this thing out. Shut this thing down. All right. That's John Claffey. <laughs> He's with Tour Edge. Check them out, you know, at Tour Edge Golf on Twitter. Yep. Tour Edge Golf on Twitter. I think it's just, it's actually at Tour Edge Golf on Instagram too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. That's at yep. Chris McEwen on all the social medias. This is his YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, like this video. Hey, you got questions about anything Tour Edge right now? Leave them in the comments. We'll get John to answer them. Yeah, we'll answer. No problem. I'm Bill Bush, JerryRangeHeroes.com. This is episode 81 of That Range Life, a show sometimes about golf. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye.